Ladies and gentlemen, our food supply is under attack, and I want to take a look at a few of the most recent examples of sabotage being conducted against it at multiple levels, from the policy making, to the data reporting, to on the ground, literally setting things on fire and putting things into crops that will damage farmers' equipment or kill off livestock thousands at a time. Uh, we need to talk about this. I'm Christian, and this is the Ice Age Farmer broadcast. And we begin in New Zealand, where the government has instituted policies which, while allowing musicians and non-essential workers of any sort to come in from anywhere in the world, migrant farm workers are summarily denied entrance, even from countries that have no COVID-19 outbreaks. Take a listen. Right, as we heard earlier this morning, Immigration New Zealand has granted border exemptions to some offshore musicians to participate in the Summer Winery Tour 29, I think. And as uh, all rugby fans are well aware, immigration accommodations have been made for the Australian rugby team, plus the English netball team and the West Indies and Pakistan cricket teams and the America's Cup teams. But for experienced seasonal fruit pickers, even from completely COVID-19 free Samoa, they haven't had a single case, our borders remain shut. How many people would normally come in? How many fruit pickers come in? About 14,000. 14,000? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And what happens if you don't get them? What happens to fruit picking? What happens to horticulture generally? It's not just fruit, it's veggies, the whole lot. What happens to it? Well, we won't get harvested. The crops will rot on the ground and prices will increase really quickly. As well as which there'll be a lot of loss of work for our packers because if we don't have fruit to pack, we don't have work for them. And presumably there's just downstream domino after domino falling, right? Absolutely. Because yes, so crops rotting on the ground, food prices rising. We're hearing these stories echo across everywhere in the world right now, including also we heard the same words from Michigan, where Governor Whitmer instituted mandatory testing for farm workers, much like Governor Inslee in Washington and Governor Newsom in California. These governors, who are obviously all quite in on the attempt to shut down food production, have shown us that when you mandate uh, COVID-19 tests, the farm workers say, whoa, I don't want to have anything to do with this because it could affect my own livelihood. If I get quarantined for two weeks, this is money I need for my family. So they ran away. They left those states to find somewhere they could work. And that means that there were unpicked fields and orchards left behind, food rotting in the ground. We can see from these three examples that this is why Joe Biden, once he finishes playing with his face diaper here, yeah, there you go, uh, this is why when he gives an example of we should be expanding mandatory testing. It's not just the folks in the White House or who travel with me that deserve regular testing. It's folks in the meatpacking and food processing plants, grocery store workers, every single American. Ladies and gentlemen, it's no coincidence that the three examples he gives are all related to the food supply chain because this is a coordinated attack and these COVID-19 tests are a way of just throwing, uh, shutting down whatever you want. Just throw more testing at it, you'll get false positives and then you can shut it down. So when you see the, this <laughs> gentleman suggesting that we uh, mandate testing for everyone in the food supply chain, it's quite clear what's actually going on. Now let's look at the fact that the USDA has been going back to last year's numbers and re retroactively bumping down the numbers. So we heard last year on this channel, the Ice Age Farmer channel, a top 1% producer come on and say, look, there's a force at work who's trying to give the impression that everything is okay here. In other words, the USDA is lying about the crop production numbers. It's much worse than they're letting on. Well, that has been vindicated this year as the USDA goes back to last year's numbers now, now that no one's paying attention to them, and bumps them down. So if they had given out this number initially, people would have freaked out and the market would have adjusted. And the market really defines people's perceptions. I get so many messages from people that say, Christian, you're talking about food supply issues, but the market doesn't seem to reflect that, so it's clearly not happening, right? So this is perception management. The USDA lies when it happens, and then now they go back and they massage those numbers. And this is causing many experts to say, yeah, they're, they're just, they're ruining their credibility here. And uh, some people have given up. It's a complete joke at this point. So this is an example of changing the data to manage perceptions, to, to manage the market prices, and that controls reality. But the, the bottom line is nobody governs truth, and those crops are not there, and our food supply is at risk. 
Now let's take a look at this report out of Amsterdam, which a gentleman sent me. Here's the translation. Agricultural terror. Iron bolts hung in the cornfield. And we read from the article, a remarkable form of vandalism in Clarenbeek, iron bolts are suddenly attached to the corn, causing major problems when harvesting the crop. Two machines have already been damaged to the tune of thousands of euros. Quote, they want to take out the farmer. And while it actually turns out that it's the contractor that owns those combines that are having to take the, the repair bills, not the farmer, um, the, the intent here remains clear that this is an attack on the farmers. But I got even more insight into what was going on when the next day, this story appeared out of Michigan, 1,000 acres of corn in Bay County sabotaged in order to kill cows, according to police. Quote, police are investigating an odd case of vandalism to a Bay County farmer's crops, one which would potentially have harmed thousands of cows if not detected in time. The sheriff described this operation as a, quote, willful, specific intent to harm livestock. The perpetrators took pieces of aluminum and scrap metal, seen here, and affixed them to using zip ties to stalks of corn, all in all, three of the farmers' fields had been targeted, totaling thousands of acres of corn, which have now been thrown away. Quote, the corn got put through a silage chopper and was ground into fine pieces in order to feed to the cattle. But the metal pieces were in there as well, and so all of these metal shavings, quote, uh, were intended to cause internal damage to the cows that ate it. As the corn was being harvested, fortunately, the ground-up metal shavings began making noises, and they noticed it before they actually fed this tarnished food to the um, to the cows, but um, it had, quote, so much metal shavings in it, had the cows eaten it, it probably would have killed them. A thousand acres of silage was lost, and the farmer estimated that the cost of this was about half a million dollars, but had they actually taken out the 4,000 head of cattle, it would have been much worse. In fact, it almost certainly would have been game over for that rancher. You can't lose 4,000 head of cattle and just come back the next day and stay in business. So I'm glad that they caught this before the animals were lost. But this is an example of no matter who it is, uh, animal rebellion or extinction rebellion out there trying to attack animal agriculture or someone else, this is indicative of the continuing attack on animal agriculture and on traditional farming and ranching, which we know from the Rockefeller's own report, Reset the Table, is being taken out. It's a transformation of the U.S. food supply and a move to indoor, vertical insect farms and fake meat. Make no mistake, this is part of the coordinated attack on agriculture. I also wanted to look at this latest fire. We've seen fires at sugar refineries in Louisiana, grain silos in Iowa, warehouses in the UK, somehow infrastructure across the food supply chain is just burning down, just suddenly catching fire and immolating. And this, a huge grain silo in Moringo, Saskatchewan, burned down. Here's a picture of what it looked like before it burned down. You can tell it is a huge facility with tons. It's been added on to over the years and sort of a um, patchwork of things, but this has been damaged. And of course, we're now at the end of harvest season. All of these silos were chock full of grains. So this is another example where we lose both a ton of food and the infrastructure itself that was used to hold and distribute this food. Uh, they are whittling away at our food supply. And I just wanted to make that abundantly clear. You can also see my previous reports where I've covered some of those other fires that are just happening. They're just happening around the world, just coincidentally. Um, at an order of magnitude never before seen. This is off the, off the scales right now. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, that, that at all levels, from the governance to the data reporting to literally on the ground conducting sabotage and poisoning animals, food supply is under attack. And it is incumbent upon all of us right now to spread the word about the agendas that are at play and to start growing our own food. You can find this report and all my reports on iceagefarmer.com. And if you value the information that I'm bringing, you can also support this broadcast. Visit iceagefarmer.com slash support to see a few different ways of doing so. And I genuinely appreciate your support. Um, but mostly I thank you for spreading the word about what's going on because it's gonna take all of us growing our own food and spreading the word to overcome this war that is being waged. And if you have examples of bad policies or food going to waste or empty shelves, I'd love to hear from you. You can send me a note at iceagefarmer at protonmail.com. For now, let's go build great things, grow abundant food. 
raise awesome animals and, uh, and have a good time doing it. Thanks for watching, folks, and be well.